Hello everyone, NadLabs here. Today we're going to be making this click and drag effect in the Godot game engine version 3.2 and we're going to be making sure that we can grab our objects, move them as fast as we want to, and on top of that if objects are interacting with each other we should be able to move multiple objects. For example if I just grab all of these guys together and I'll be able to move them one by one so the user will not be confused when your objects are overlapping. Let's get right into it. Now I'm going to be taking a little bit of a different approach. What I'm going to be doing is showing you guys and gals the entire code right here. This is all it is. That's all you need to make sure that this effect that you saw a couple seconds ago works. But the thing is, if that's all you want to copy, go ahead. If you want to understand how I made this and hopefully understand the first principles thinking techniques I used, then stick around and I'll make sure that I'll try my best to explain how to think and make something like this yourself. Let's get right into it. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make a block. Just make a new scene, right? Put in an area 2D. Oops, where'd it go? Area 2D. Give it a sprite and give it a collision shape, right? That's all you need to make the block. Very simple, but the magic happens in the script. So once you make a new script, just by clicking over here, for you would be like a green plus arrow, just click it, make a new script, and you'll be greeted not with this, you'll be greeted with blank text or some comments. But what we're going to want to do is we're going to say, well, what do, what do we want to say with the block? We want to say that, sorry, let me just go here. We want to say something like, if this block is clicked, right? If this block is clicked, then let's move it. We want to do something like what we're doing right now. We want to say that if we click it, or not like this, this is a for the Godot game engine, right? But if we're inside of it, then we should be able to move it. Okay, so we're going to need to use some signals. So to your script, once you made it, just double click on mouse entered and connect or uh, double the or uh, click on mouse entered or click on mouse entered, click connect and connect. That's all we need for the signals. And we're going to be using something called Boolean flags. So make a make. So make two variables mouse in and followable and set them equal to false at the beginning because the mouse is not inside that block yet and it's not and that block should not be able to follow the mouse just yet so that's why we're setting them to false at the beginning i just realized that's double space we're also going to make a difference variable and this is because i went ahead and uh, drew my explanation before hand but essentially what we're going to be doing is getting the difference between where we clicked and the center of the block and we're getting this by the global position so we can get a resultant and uh, again, this is just simple vector maths, and I'll show you if you take the red line over here, right? It's the same red line that I just put over here. And if you put that white line right here, you can see that we get this uh, sort of triangle. And if we just complete the triangle like this, we get a resultant and that resultant is right there. That's basic vector subtraction when we get to it, because this is what the difference variable will, will do. And I'm actually going to comment these lines out because we're going to get to that part in a bit, but we just want to say that when the mouse entered, right, this is the mouse entered signal. If I just go over here, I can double check and show you, right? If I just put my mouse cursor over here, if I double click on this, if I double click on this, right, the green one, the actual signal, it'll, it'll actually take me to that function. And we just want to say that whenever mouse has entered inside of the block, set mouse in equal to true. And then we want to say exactly, if you think from it first principles, when we, when the mouse leaves the block, set mouse in equal to false. Simple enough. Now we're going to make sure, now we're going to make sure that when we click on, right, I'm forcefully clicking. I'm trying to explain that when we click, we want to make sure that an event happens. So we're going to go to our project settings, input map, and we're going to type in click. And you can see I can't add it because I already have it, but essentially you just want to go here and click, uh, and just click mouse button. Uh, and that's what I'm assuming most people are going to be doing and just click add. I already have it. So nothing changed. What we're going to say is when we click, and if our mouse cursor is inside that certain block, set the difference variable to resultant, right? Which is just simple vector subtraction and set the followable Boolean to true. This is important because if we did not check for mouse in equal to true, I'll just show you. And before I show you, try pausing the video and try thinking what would happen. If we're not checking if the mouse is within a certain block, what do you think might happen? Hopefully you paused and thought of it. What will happen is that we will be able to move all the blocks at once because we're not checking where the mouse is. And I honestly didn't think this would happen, but this is also a pretty interesting concept for a game. 
if anyone's interested, take it. And that's just some really unexpected behavior if we're not really checking if mouse in is equal to true. And I can even show you if I take out mouse in equal to true entirely, we get the same behavior and we get the actual behavior I was predicting, which was anyway, if we release the mouse button, so this click, release, click, release. If we release it, we're going to make sure that the followable variable is equal to false. Now, because we have these two flags, when we go to our process function, the process function is called every frame of the game. We're just going to say, if this followable variable is equal to true, you don't need to write is equal to true because it automatically understands if it's a Boolean, if it's true or not. If that followable variable is equal to true, then we're just going to get the global position and we're going to set it equal to the mouse and subtract the difference, which is essentially just saying, uh, make sure that wherever this uh, mouse is, make sure it's with an offset. That's basically what it's saying. And if we run it, we get the expected behavior, which is I'm able to drag no matter how fast I'm going, no matter if I go over a block. But the issue is if I'm if I'm overlapping, I was about to say colliding, but if I'm overlapping another block and I click, I'm able to drag both. Let's say you don't want this. How do we get rid of it? Well, we would use this loop. Before the loop, we're going to have to get the difference variable again. The difference variable is again just this vector mathematics and I showed exactly how I got the resultant which is just vector subtraction and vector subtraction is just adding two vectors but you flip the other vector around. If you don't know what that is, uh, I would suggest watching some Khan Academy on vector mass and you'll understand what I'm trying to say. We're also going to be using a for loop and we're going to say for blocks in get parent dot get children. You just want to make a quick note. You're going to want to make sure that uh, you have a separate node which holds all your blocks. It's just easier and it reduces errors because all the blocks are in one area and they're able to loop with each other only. When we do this, we're going to say if the block is equal to ourself, continue. Now continue is a keyword which basically means that if this uh, if block number one over here was uh, going through the loop, then it would say if so it'll go. Okay, so I'm going to go get my parent. So this is the array of children and the first one is me. So it's equal to myself. So what do I do? I just go to the next one. I don't do anything with it. If block two was looping through it, it would say, okay, this is the first one. It's not me. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say that that block dot mouse in. So I'm getting the variable to that other block. If it's equal to true, set it equal to false. And that's basically what we're going to do to make sure that no other blocks move because we're trying to say that the mouse is not within the other block if it's overlapped. If that doesn't make sense, it's basically trying to say that if the mouse is within two blocks, make sure it's in the block that we last entered. That should make sense. And if that doesn't make sense, just leave a comment. I'll try explaining it in a better way. And once we're done looping through this, we're going to make sure that our, which is self dot or our very own mouse dot in is equal to true. We don't need to do self because it's already assumed that this is our self. And here we go. If we run the scene, we get exactly what we want. We get this. And look, I'm going to explain what I meant. If I intersect, this is the one that I'm going to move. But which one am I going to move now? Pause the video and I suggest try guessing. We're going to move the one that we last touched. And the one we last touched is this one. And even if we have multiple like this, like this, you can still probably guess which one we're going to grab. That one, because that one was the last one put. And if you see this, like this, the last one we're going to grab is actually this rectangle one, because it's the last one we entered. It's a little confusing, but hopefully that makes sense. And if you have any questions, please uh, leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them. And if you're interested, I'm going to be making a video right after this one, where we're going to make these card-like blocks it runs off the same code just very small tweaking but i'm going to make a separate video because this one is getting a bit too long anyway have a great day and if you have any questions comments concerns please leave them down below in the comments thank you for watching the follow followable variable the followable var